Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here, and in today's quick tip, we're going to be installing the JMAC Custom folding stock. Uh, so this is the folding stock. It has the folding mechanism that attaches to the firearm, but then it also has the folding butt plate that actually folds out uh, for more compact storage there. All right, so going through the installation of it, uh, the first thing you'll notice whenever you receive it is that you have this folding mechanism here. This is going to be different depending on which one you get specifically because JMAC Custom makes these uh, to mount to a bunch of different firearms. And this is the probably the most versatile one here. Uh, well, it's definitely the most versatile one here. This is the 1913 mount, so it'll mount to any 1913 pick rail. Uh, and then they make them that attach to different AKs and different things like that. Uh, anything you can think of, they pretty much make one to attach to it. Uh, so with that being said, what we're attaching it to is this American Defense Manufacturing uh, lower receiver here. And this is one specifically made for the BRN 180. It has a 1913 rail machined into the back of it. So that's the first thing you'll notice here. It definitely won't work on a standard AR-15. Uh, it's made with the BRN series in mind. All right, so I'm just gonna set that in our vise and we'll get to that later. Uh, tools you're gonna need is going to be a hex wrench. Uh, this one here, let me make sure I get the size right. Yep, this is the 530 seconds. Uh, it's the only size you're gonna need. I'm using it on the fix, fix it sticks here, uh, which is awesome. All right, so let's talk about the parts it comes with. So it comes with the arm bar. Uh, this is the eight inch raised version. If you're shopping around, you'll notice that they make these in different configurations. Uh, they make a nine inch, or, well, they make different lengths. Um, this is, like I said, this is the eight inch. You can get it in a straight bar. This is the raised bar. Uh, a few different variations there, but I prefer just the standard eight inch raised bar. I feel that kind of fits me best. All right, and like I said before, you have your folding mechanism. You have the actual butt plate itself. And then you have some of this hardware here. So this is the pin that attaches the butt plate to the folding mechanism. And this nifty little thing here, this is a contained, let me just knock everything over. This is a contained uh, detent and spring that actually control the, uh, the way the, the buttstock itself folds. Uh, and it's nifty that they kind of put it there contained. You don't have to fumble with any springs and detents, which is nice. Uh, then you have whatever this piece is called. We're gonna call it the thing for now because we don't really have the technical term for that. And I'll show you what it does later. And then this is the screw that attaches the arm bar to the 1913 folding mechanism. All right, so before we get started, I just want to say that there's two ways to do this. You can do it so that it folds to the left or that it folds to the right. So left hand fold is going to be standard for most everything uh, because the ejection port's on the right hand side. So we're going to go ahead and set it up like that. Then I'll show you how to set it up the other way if you want it to fold the other way. It's super easy. Okay, so first let's assemble our buttstock to the armbar assembly. All right, so what we're going to need to do first is take the thing, right? And if you look, it only really goes in there one way. It should sit in there so that it's not sticking out from any side. And it'll look something like that there. And I'll put it in wrong to show you what it would look like here. Uh, if you put it in upside down, you'll have the sharp edge sticking up. All right, so we'll just flip it in only goes in one way that actually looks right here because it fits the shape of the arm bar. All right, so with that just kind of sitting in place there, we can take the butt piece assembly here and insert that contained spring and detent. All right, and this is technically a butt pad. It's not a brace or anything like that. So I just got to throw that out there as well. And now we can actually Put these two pieces together and you got to be careful because these there's nothing holding these pieces in right now they'll just fall right out okay so we'll just slide those pieces together just like that align the holes and all the the logos and everything should be 
facing upward. That's how you know you have it installed correctly. Uh, it won't go on correctly if you try to install it upside down, which again, I'll show you just to kind of see here. You will not be able to get the holes to fully align if you do it upside down, which is a good thing. All right, so we'll put it on right side up just like that. Now, remember that little piece of sheet metal we called the thing? Uh, that's just a friction piece. So what's gonna happen is this pin is gonna go through there and that friction piece is gonna wrap around it and keep it from coming out and it works extremely well. Uh, so this pin is a bit scratched because I, I did this beforehand. I didn't want my first time to be on camera. Uh, get your minds out the gutter. All right, and then we'll just press this piece in You'll be able to fill it, go through the butt plate there, and then it's gonna go through and hit that friction piece. When it does, I'm just gonna use the hammer to tap it the rest of the way through. All right, so let's do that in real time here. All right. And you'll just have to beat a little bit of that spring tension to get it through both pieces. Just like that, here we go. All right, now I feel it contacting that sheet metal piece in there. So I'm just gonna give it a tap. And I'm using my nylon head on the hammer uh, instead of using the punch. I'm just gonna drive it all the way in with this. Make sure it's nice and flush on both ends. And you should be able to fold it out and fold it back in. Hear it click nice and easy. That's what it should be like, just like that. All right, so now we can go ahead and install it to the rest of the lower receiver here. And you can set this up beforehand and then install it on the firearm. Um, I like to go ahead and just throw it on the firearm. All right. So as I mentioned before, standard was to be on the left-hand side. So I'll just back out my screw here, mount it to the 1913 rail. And what I like to do as far as height goes, if, and if you need the cheek piece on here to be higher or lower, you can just move it up and down on the rail. You don't have to install it exactly where I'm installing it. Uh, but what I like to do, I like to get the top of the folding mechanism flush with the top of the receiver, just like that. And I'll just loosen this here. Clamp it over. Snug it up hand tight. And I'll just tighten it up from there, just like that. All right, so now what we can do, uh, taking this other screw that it comes with here, this is the last, last piece of hardware, we'll put the stock just like this. And if you can see, there are two holes drilled in this plate right here. We wanna line it up with the top hole and I'll show you why that bottom hole's there whenever we flip it over to the other side. All right, so let me get this so you guys can see it here. All right, we're gonna set it with that top hole and just run our screw through the other side. I'm doing this blind, so bear with me. snug that up nice and tight and if you want you can use some blue Loctite on there as well uh, that that may help you out if you need it and that's it we just installed the folding stock adapter so in order to unfold it on this one uh, you just lift up it's hard to do without the rest of the firearm being there so just bear with me all right and it folds just like that 
That's the folded position. And for more compact storage, you can lift up that arm bar, have everything nice and flush there, or arm bar, um, butt plate. All right, so in order to do it on the other side, so on the flip side here, what we're gonna do is just separate the bar from the folding mechanism. We're gonna take that screw all the way out. Set that aside. Then we're gonna remove the folding mechanism from the 1913 rail. All right, and all we need to do now is flip it. So I'm gonna flip it over, just like that, and reattach it to the rail. And now, instead of using this hole, because it's upside down, so the bottom hole was on the top side whenever we had it the other way, we're still gonna use the top hole. So we're gonna use the top hole on this side, which was the bottom hole on the other side. So that's why there's two holes in it. We're gonna run the same exact procedure here. I'm gonna set it on there. Put the screw in. Again, I'm doing this blind, so bear with me. I'm gonna snug that up. All right, nice and tight. So now it folds the other way. So it's completely reversible. The only thing to note here is that instead of lifting up to fold it, since it's upside, since the folding mechanism is flipped over, uh, what we need to do is push down to fold it. So again, without the rest of the firearm on here, this is difficult, but just like that. Nothing to it. So. If you've done these before, um, or if you have any questions or comments, you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to post those down below. We'd like to hear from you. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching this on the website, I'll link the products down below. Uh, chances are you might actually be watching this video on the product page. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.